The coronavirus has been the cause of a lot of sorrow, but it has not defeated Americans' sense of humor, proving again that humor, like faith, is a powerful survival tool. Reverend Harry Mahoney of Dedham, Massachusetts, reported that a Jewish friend emailed him the following message. I posted on Facebook that there are new Seder rules. Paint the doorposts and knobs with Lysol instead of blood. And only let in Elijah the prophet if he is wearing a face mask and stays at least eight feet from everybody at the table. Good morning, friends. This is the Gospel of Joy. I am the Reverend Josh Knappenberger, the self-proclaimed pastor of laughter, the self-proclaimed cleric of comedy, and it is a joy to have you here and to be with you. I hope to give you enough laughs to get through today, but I hope even more to give you enough laughs to make you want to come back tomorrow. Uh, we tell jokes here, so make sure you comment on which joke you like the best. Good morning, Margaret. It's great to have you with us. You can check out the YouTube channel, St. James UCC Allentown, for the videos of the past. The videos of the past. <laughs> They're up there. You can take a look at them. Um, also, don't forget to comment, like, share, and tag your friends in this video so we can get the video out to as many people as possible. And that way, we spread our joy and laughter to as many people as we can. Joy and laughter doesn't do much good if, if nobody hears it. Also, in front of St. James UCC on 15th Street, we have our lending library, book box ministry. It is meant to be an exchange. So if you... Take a book, please leave a book. It's keeping the ministry going. It is a ministry we are glad to do for the community, for the children of the community. So be sure to stop by, check it out, and see if there's anything there that that piques your fancy. Also, our organist, James Thompson, will be playing at 2.30 this afternoon, so check him out. Good morning, Mikey. It's great to have you with us. Now, on to my buddies. I got this guy today. If you've been with us since the very beginning, he will look very familiar. He was one of the ones that I showed on the first day. <laughs> no, I'm not necessarily going back and redoing some, but this guy is not alone. Get his chest open here. He has another guy working him from inside. <laughs> and yes, he does come out. And yes, he does transform into a car. And his name is Minimus Ambus. So really, I my two buddies are one that I've shown before and they go together. But anyway, um, there is even a transformer that is controlled by a a little smaller transformer from inside. So that's pretty fun. All right, those are the buddies I got for you this morning. The scripture lessons are in the description of this video. Uh, the first one is from Job chapter 39, verses 13 to 14. And I have a joke while you are looking for that. Sign outside the First Baptist Church in Providence, Rhode Island during the pandemic. It says, I had not planned on giving up this much for Lent. That was sent in by Bill Breen of Taunton, Massachusetts. Job chapter 39, verses 13 to 14. This is at the end of Job. Job all the bad stuff has happened to Job. He's now talking to God, and God's responding to him. The ostrich's wings flap wildly, though its pinions lack plumage, for it leaves its eggs to the earth and lets them be warmed in the ground. And our second scripture is from Luke chapter 11, verses 12 to 13. And I have another sign while you are looking that up. 
This is a sign put up during the coronavirus quarantine. Thoughts and prayers going out to all the married men who have spent months, spent months telling their wives, I'll do that when I have more time. That was sent in by Risa Samra of Hallandale Beach, Florida. Now you have the time. Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 11, verse 12 to 13. Or if the child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the reading of God's holy word. May God bless the reading, hearing, and living of God's holy word this morning and as we navigate these dark times. Now, I have a kid's message this morning, so if you have kids, put them in front of the computer. How you doing? Were you able to do anything fun this week? I know I did something fun. I went in our bouncy house with my four-year-old daughter, and that was so much fun. I hope you were able to do something fun. It's so hard to find fun things to do when you're really not supposed to go anywhere. But I hope you did. Now, the last two weeks we've been talking about food. That reminds us of God. We talked about the pretzel the first week and the second week. We talked about the candy cane, how that reminds us of Jesus. Today we are talking about the egg. Eggs remind us of God. Because what comes out of an egg? A baby animal comes out of an egg. That's right, a baby animal. And Baby animals, just like baby humans, are important and they, repre and they represent something that's going to survive into the future. They give us hope that the future, the days ahead, can be better and that they have, um, and that we will survive, we will go on. Now, an egg reminds us of Jesus because we all get new life in Jesus. Jesus forgives us from our sins through his resurrection. And just like Jesus was, re was resurrected, we can be resurrected into a new life. And our future can have hope and it can be bright. Now, there's usually something inside eggs, and there's something inside here. What do you think, what kinds of animals comes out of eggs? Birds. Birds come out of eggs. Yeah. Let's see if there's a bird in here. Let's see if there's a bird in here. <gasps> that doesn't look like a bird. It looks like a turtle. The turtles come out of eggs, too. They do. And we need to remember that when Jesus forgives our sins and when he calls us to do things for him and to serve him, it may not always be what we expect. We expected a bird, but we got a turtle. Same thing in our lives. We may expect one thing, but Jesus and God gives us another. I happen to like turtles better than birds. Sometimes what God gives us is better than what we originally wanted. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. We don't always get what we want, but Jesus gives us what we need, and usually it is better than what we wanted. Okay. And whenever you look at the egg, remember there is hope inside. And there is the future. Good days ahead. Yep. All right. Now, I have some jokes I'm going to tell to the adults. If you want to stay around, you can. If not, you can uh, 
go do whatever your your mommies and daddies or your grandmas and grandpas say you can do. Okay. All right. So I do have more jokes for us. And we're going to start with this. Got some animal jokes. We're on an, on an animal chapter in this book. It's called Let There Be Animals. Every parent type reading this or hearing this has had to man or woman up to the eternal question, will Fido go to heaven? As far as we know, no one has created a four spiritual laws tracked for God's creatures. On St. Francis Sunday, some churches have a, have a blessing of the animals, but according to most theologies, count on enjoying your four-footed brethren in the here and now. Of course, God did have a sense of humor when he said, let there be aardvarks. I happen to believe that pets go to heaven, but that's just me. This one's entitled A Dog Tale. Margaret and Fred Ziegler wanted a truly Christian dog, so they went to a kennel that specialized in that particular breed. There they found a dog they liked. When they asked him to fetch a Bible, he did it in a flash. When they instructed him to look up John 3.16, he turned right to it. Oh, we'll take this pup. He's wonderful, said Margaret and Fred. That night, the Zigglers invited their friends from their church over to meet the remarkable dog. The guests were impressed with Fido's ability to do Christian tricks. Can he do regular dog tricks too, they asked. That stopped the, Zigg the, the Zigglers cold. They'd never even thought of that. Well, they said, let's try this out. So they clearly pronounced the command, heel. Quick as a wink, the dog jumped, uh, put his paw on Ziggler's forehead, closed his eyes in concentration, and bowed his head. And this is called Tale of a Cat, T-A-L-E. Sunday school teacher. Why would it be wrong to cut off a cat's tail? Prissy, the Bible says what God has put together, let no man put asunder. That's true. That's true. That's true. Okay. And we have a sign. Uh, oh, no, not a sign. But a saying. The police want you to know that running from them is not social distancing. Just remember that if the police are chasing you. Sent in by Paul Kurlowitz, St. Michael's Lutheran Church, Portage, Michigan. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I'd go to a bank teller with a mask on asking for money. That was sent in by Risa Samra of Hallandale Beach, Florida. And I made a similar joke. I always thought that going into a convenience store with a mask was not a good thing. But now you'll get in trouble if you do go into the 7-Eleven without a mask. All right. These items came from Reverend Dr. Carl R. Kraft, a Methodist minister in Dover, Delaware, about being quarantined. It's like being 16 again, and I'm grounded. Returned from the grocery store with with my hubby, took masks off, turned out to be the wrong hubby. Be attentive. <laughs> the world has turned upside down. Old folks are sneaking out of the house and their kids are yelling at them to stay indoors. Quarant and that's true. Um, there are, I've heard stories of people whose parents will go to the grocery store like every day of the week or every other day of the week, and the kids are saying, no, stay inside. We want you to live. We want you to be safe. Quarantine has turned us all into dogs. We roam the house all day looking for food. We are told no if we get too close to strangers, and we get really excited about car rides. Day 10 at home, and the dog is like looking at me like, see, this is why I chew the furniture. So we can expect car insurance to go down since nobody can go anywhere. Just wondering, Jake from State Farm, my car, my, they, my car insurance actually gave me a rebate. 
a little bit of a rebate because we weren't going anywhere. 2019, stay away from negative people. 2020, stay away from positive people. And there's a cartoon here I want to show you. Um, I talked about quarantine, this COVID thing being like being on the ark uh, with the animals. And remember, the 40 days was just the beginning in the ark. There was 180 days after that that they had to stay in the ark. So 40 days was just the rain. Took six months for the rain to subside. So anyway, um, here we go. It's got a woman teaching her daughter about Noah, and it says, Yes, it was hard being cooped up in the ark with all the animals in the world, but not as hard as being cooped up at home with you and your brother. Those of you who have kids will definitely understand that one. I have more cartoons here. And this one on the end has a pastor doing a home visit. And it looks like the husband and wife are about to have a fencing duel. So the wife says, thanks for coming, Pastor. I didn't know who else to call. I guess to referee their duel. I don't know. Um, okay. Here we have Moses on top of the mountain with the tablets. And he's got his dog up there. And the tablets say, sit, speak. Shake, heal, stay, wait, down, fetch, come, play. And Moses says, I think these were meant for you. I think that's probably true. And over here, we have someone coming to heaven, and the welcome desk is there. And the guy behind the welcome desk says, you'll need to answer, enter, you'll need a, you, oh, gospel of the tongue tied. You'll need a username and password to enter. Yes, you will need a username and password to enter heaven. Won't that be a surprise? And we'll end on a family circus. Don't forget to comment on which joke you like the best this morning. We'll end with a family circus. And the little girl is eating an apple with one of the boys and she says if daddy had done this every day he wouldn't be sick right now apple a day keeps the doctor away actually my grandmother said an apple a day keeps the dentist away because apparently apples are so crisp and rough that they sometimes that they help to clean plaque off your teeth so anyway Thanks for joining us. That's all I got for you this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to uh, come back tomorrow. We're going to have communion, so don't forget your bread, your juice, your wine, or your water. And our organist, James Thompson, will be, pray will be playing his hymns this afternoon. For now, will you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you for giving us eggs. Thank you for giving us something that we don't know what is inside, but we know it is good. We give you thanks for all these things. Help us to remember that the egg symbolizes resurrection and that we can have new life in you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Keep healthy. Keep safe. Keep laughing. Don't forget to do one thing every day that brings you joy. I don't care what it is. Find it and do it. And I will be here at 1030 every morning for the foreseeable future. May God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen. God bless. I will see you tomorrow.